Yeah, welcome to Prime Business with me, Charles Aita. We have a list of business stories uh, for you this evening, but we shall begin with... government interest payment are expected to rise in the coming months as the cost of borrowing on the domestic market surpasses 25 percent. Though liquidity has fairly improved in the market, the increase in interest payment will come at a huge cost to the government. Charles Nixiabwa looks at the latest Treasury bills auctioning and has more in this report. Government spent about 10.6 billion cities to pay interest on loans in the first quarter of this year with a chunk being used to service domestic debt. However, with the current trend of rising interest rates, which we are unsure when it will end, the government may spend more in the second quarter and probably the third quarter to settle interest on loans. According to the auctioning result, the interest on the 91-day treasury bill shot up to 25.6% from 24.5% recorded the previous week. That of the 91-day T-bills went up to 26.4% from 25.98%. The one-year bill also went for 27.4%. Meanwhile, government T-bill sale was oversubscribed by 21%. The government secured a little above 1.59 billion cities from the investors, which will be used largely to finance part of the 2022 budget. The present situation occasioned by higher interest rates seems to have improved liquidity in the market. Meanwhile, economist professor Lord Mensah says the increase in interest payments is a disincentive preventing the average Ghanaian from borrowing from banks. He also intimates that the programs such as the e-levy implemented to address the high cost of borrowing have failed. The government himself is borrowing around 25%. Then obviously, the private man's um, borrowing cost will also go up to so effectively um, the agenda or the essence of getting the economy to the private man and to the individual uh, may not be achieved. So now you realize that, you know, it's more appetizing to lend to the government. Because if you are, you know, giving, you know, government money through treasury bills and at the end of the year you are getting one-fourth of the money, which is the 25%, I mean, it gives the signal that, hey, don't give your money to anyone else, but then just put the money in treasury bills. What is going to happen is that we're going to end up having the economy. The other day, that has been the, you know, the trend, and that is what we've been drumming up. And I won't blame, you know, um, anybody as as a result of this. Uh, what is happening now is that government's background, the economic outlook, you know, is quite weaker. So anybody that is lending to the government may want more returns to lend to the government, and that is what has brought us this far. And effectively. I can tell you that this is going to crunch the economy as far as the private you know, sector is concerned. And, and what can be done uh, to bring some stability to the market, to stop the rates from rising? Well, unless, you know, government, you know, roll out, you know, programs that will stop the government from borrowing. I mean, one of them was the yield levy. We thought, you know, in the, with the inception of the yield levy, we were going to have, you know, reduce the government's appetite for borrowing. But, you know, that is not the case because as uh, we got a signal this afternoon, the yield levy um, is, you know, more or less not living as expected. And so effectively, um, we may have to look at possibly going to the higher. But, you know, I can tell you that it's too early to jump in in that manner because the only way that can solve, you know, this problem will be to get external inflows in a soft manner. And that is why earlier on, we gave the signal that government should turn up to the IMF, but they gave us the assurance that e should be able to solve the problem. 
In the same vein, close confidant of President Okufuado, Gabi Asari Ochidako, said the tax on electronic tra transfers has failed to hit the minimal target after two months of its introduction. According to him, the tax has been able to mobilize just 60 million cities out of the projected 600 million cities. Let's now show you what he tweeted uh, earlier today. It reads that after, fi after five months, of stalemate and bashing, the e-levy after implementation is delivering only 10% of estimated revenues. Our revenues remain very low as compared to the rest of the world, debt levels dangerously high, CD like most currencies struggling against the US dollar. Are you surprised about this? This is the question that he posts the business community as well as his fans on Twitter earlier today. Away from that, the United Nations General Assembly designated 27th of June, which is today, as Micro, Small and Medium Sized Enterprises Day to raise awareness of the tremendous contributions of micro, small and medium sized enterprises to the achievement of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Here in Ghana, though, MSMEs account for 90% of businesses, 60 to 70% of employment, and 50% of GDP worldwide. As the backbone of societies everywhere, they contribute to local and national economies and to sustaining livelihoods, in particular among the working poor, women, youth and groups in vulnerable situations. But there are unique challenges crippling the sector. 44,000 of them shut down during the heat of COVID and close to a million more are yet to receive some stimulus from the government. We'll still stay with MSMEs because the Minister for Trade and Industry, Alan Trimantin, has made a passionate call on the Bank of Ghana as well as the Minister of Finance to join forces in establishing some loan schemes that will ensure the release of funds to micro and small medium enterprises. There is more in this report. The official launch of the business resource centers across the country marks the beginning of a new journey for the operation of micro, small and medium enterprises, especially in rural areas. Minister of Trade and Industry Alan Tramating told the gathering that government is keen on supporting micro businesses to make them grow to support development projects. He used the occasion to call on the central bank to institute soft loan schemes for the players in the industry. Minister of uh, Finance here, let the Minister of Finance and the central bank, the Bank of Ghana, put together a loan guarantee scheme that will release the liquidity in the banks to support the development of micro, small and medium enterprises. All the people we are celebrating, their visuals, um, Mark Zuckerberg, they all started as small micro enterprises. Some of them actually had to quit school to start something on their own. And that's the Minister of Trade and Industrial Entrepreneurs in their end in business with me, Charles Aite. But I will leave you with international business stories, after which we have Prime Sport with Oroko Ampofo. Disturbed your news.